It seems today everybody wants to call something a tiny home and it's pretty confusing. Whether it's a container home, a cabin home, a yurt, an earth ship. But what does a home developer do when they want to make smaller houses but don't want to be called a tiny home? Well, call it a cottage, of course. So we're going to be looking at the big differences between a tiny home and a cottage home with the help of my friend Ellen Pitts. And let me know your opinion. Is it a tiny home or is it a cottage? One of the biggest differences in what anything is called a tiny home is the square footage. So what is it about these particular homes in Chatham Park that makes them considered a cottage? I know for a tiny home, it's anything less than 600 square feet. Some people will argue that and say it needs to even be less than that, but everything I've found in all my research, it needs to be less than 600 feet in order to be considered a tiny home. There will eventually be 22,000 homes in the Chatham Park community. What we're calling tiny homes are really the cottage collection from the fresh paint line at Garmin Homes. The cottage collection will have a total of 33 homes when completed. There are four floor plans and they range in size from 828 square feet to 1,376 square feet. Now when Ellen sent me these houses, these cottages that look like tiny homes to me, she showed me the website and I looked at the price per square foot, which is around like $220 per square foot and I nearly like fell off the, my chair. It does seem that there's a lot of amenities in this little subdivision, but then when I looked up the average cost per square foot for a tiny home, I was like, oh, it's not as bad as I thought. For a tiny home, the average price per square foot is $300, no lie. I would like to note that the average cost per square foot for a traditional stick-built home is $101. So. I hope this neighborhood has some pretty fancy amenities. When completed, Chatham Park will be roughly 7,000 acres with a third of that space set aside as parks and green spaces. There will be over 50 miles of dedicated hiking and biking trails with access to the Haw River and Jordan Lake. These trails will connect residents to each of the five village centers, including the shops, restaurants, and other businesses that will create the central hub of each village. Once completed, shopping will be incorporated into each of the village town centers designed to be walkable throughout the community. And the closest grocery stores are anywhere from a quarter mile to a mile away. Larger big box stores are available 15 to 20 minutes away in Apex and Chapel Hill. Now, what some people consider a tiny home, it has to be on wheels and they could travel down the road with it. But there are many people that attach them to a permanent foundation, just like these cottages at Chatham Park. So that doesn't necessarily negate it being a tiny home. I still say these cottages look like a tiny home. One of the fastest growing types of tiny homes is a granny pod. Granny pods are a small modular home, typically between three and 500 square feet, that sits in a backyard of a main house. Most people think of it as an in-law suite or just a place to get away. One of the biggest complaints that I hear from people that own tiny homes is there isn't a lot of storage. Of course, they're looking for a lifestyle that they want to scale down, but there is times that they're going to need to store some things, whether it be Christmas decorations or winter sweaters, they just need a little extra space. So it does seem that there is a problem when it comes to people living in tiny homes, but it seems that Ellen explains that there is a lot of storage in these cottages at Chatham Park. Storage is thoughtfully built throughout the entire home. The single story plans offer built built-in storage in the breakfast nook benches, and all of the homes have pull-down attic access. We also build on a sealed crawl space, which is conditioned, making it ideal for storage, and there's an additional storage under every front porch. Each homeowner is deeded two assigned parking spaces, and there's additional overflow parking in three areas for the cottages. Now, when you're comparing the cottages against the tiny homes, you'll see that many tiny homes have stairs that have a loft area, which is plenty of room for a main bedroom. But when you're looking at these cottage homes, they are two story and they have actual size bedrooms. So that is a big giant difference between a cottage and a tiny home. Another type of tiny home that's piqued people's interest is a cube home. These houses kind of remind me of Ikea, but they do offer the same kinds of things that many tiny homes offer. They just give it that nice square modern look. Another big difference that you'll notice with the cottages and a regular tiny house is the fact that they actually have kitchens that look like a kitchen. When you look at a tiny house, yes, it's a kitchen. There's no doubt about it, but they're like 
a little tiny sink and a little tiny trash can and a little tiny faucet. All of it's really super cute, but I mean, it may not be so practical for you. So maybe the cottage would be something you'd be interested. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the kitchens at Chatham Park and see what you think. Do you like that over the tiny house? We can compare them side by side. Another plus for many tiny homeowners is the fact that you can put them off the grid. They make composting toilets, they use solar power, they've done all sorts of things so they can basically live off the grid. What is it about a cottage home that will make it more energy efficient and make people that are more eco-minded want to buy a cottage over a tiny home? The entire Chatham Park community was designed around the idea of conservation and eco-consciousness. Homes will be powered by a community solar farm and there'll be a gray water system built into the community that will eventually provide reclaimed water for irrigation and other purposes once there's enough homes built to support it. So when I've talked to and interviewed people that have lived in tiny homes, most of them will tell you that they want to have a tiny house but a big piece of land to keep away from as many people as possible. With these cottage houses, how big is the lot themselves? There are four floor plans in the cottage collection and two of those are two stories. Lots are about 0.04 acres. Holy smokes, that is really tiny. I don't know if I could do that. I need, he can't either. We need dirt. It seems to me the people that are looking for a tiny home are looking for a new way of living. It's a completely different lifestyle. Odom and his wife started planning their tiny house when they started down the road of buying a traditional home and were approved for a mortgage they felt was much higher than they could afford. We immediately started looking at other options, what we could do in terms of uh, maintaining our financial freedom and not being caught in a mortgage that was one day just going to really bite us back. But when it comes to a cottage, it seems to me it's just a smaller house that looks super cute in a subdivision. So if you're comparing the two, it's not even really a comparison. Either you wanted to live in a smaller house in a traditional neighborhood, or you're wanting to live in a tiny home for a more simpler life and a debt-free life. It seems like those are the people that want to buy tiny homes. I could be completely wrong. If I am, please put that in the comment section. So now we've looked at cottages and we've looked at tiny homes. Do you think these cottages are really tiny homes and that developers are just trying to make it sound like it's more something's more special? Or do you think they offer something that is completely different than the typical tiny homes? Let me know in the comments section. If you'd like to watch some more videos about some pretty interesting tiny homes, go ahead and click this video right here. If you want to know more about the cottages that Ellen was showing us, you can go ahead and click her video right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.